We love our Golden Knights, mm -hmm. and everyone has their favorite player. You got Fleury, Reeves. Just, I mean, you can go so on for, forever. So many options. But what about the Golden Knights whose sweaters aren't for sale in the team store? In a Fox 5 exclusive for you, sports reporter Vince Sapienza introduces us to the team behind our team. Yeah, John, Cindy, you know, you don't hear them. You don't see them. They don't score goals. They don't make saves. But if you ask any player, coach, or even general manager George McPhee himself, they'll tell you in unison, the success of the Golden Knights starts and ends with the equipment crew. Now, they don't get a lot of attention. They don't get a lot of fanfare. So I decided to change that. On a game day, I'll sharpen everybody's skates. Uh, I sharpen all the forwards and defensemen uh, before pregame skate. Uh, and then I sharpen the goalie skates after pregame skate, uh, just for the preference that those guys like. When those guys hit the ice at T-Mobile, they're focused on their role, the part they play, forward, goalie, defenseman. This guy, head equipment manager Chris Davidson Adams, is focused on his. That's it. One piece of steel is ready. It starts right here at City National Arena. They have such a hard job, and I admire it every day, looking how much they, they have to go through uh, physical and mental punishment. and. Uh, such a grind through the schedule, you know, and our job is to just take away excuses and make them play the game and not have to think about what's going on. Chris does the thinking so they don't have to. I'm going over here to sharpen it up. Sharpening skates, stocking sticks, loading laundry, ordering, organizing, and even sewing. Uh, I do a lot, a lot of sewing. Who taught you that? Did you take ec home economics? Took home ec in uh, grade seven. I made a uh, really bad baseball bat pillow. Plus, they're professional movers. So in this room, this is everything we travel with besides the player's gear. 90 pieces of equipment, so 90 bags slash trunks. Oh, we're around, uh, it's around 7,500 pounds we carry with, plus or minus here and there. Um, depends on length of trip. The workload isn't any lighter at home. Usually put socks off to the last minute because it's not that it's hard, it's just tedious. And it's every day and it's 20 players. You gotta go through, they got two socks with 40 socks. Sometimes they got 10 holes, sometimes they got three holes. It's, it's a task. If you don't stay on top of them, they pile up. The staff has a combined 40 plus years of hockey experience. Chris has been managing equipment since he was 16 years old. In the NHL, it's a job that's expected, but in this locker room, it's appreciated. It's an extremely demanding job. They're always on call, um, but they do it with a smile. They're the ones that you, you know, our guys, you rely on so much, so much on what they do, right? And how they take care of us. They're the most important guys in the team. Uh, like, beside the fact, you know, that when you broke a stick or when your blade uh, chips off and they change it quick, there is so much more to their job than just that. Uh, when we get to the rink at 8 o'clock, they've probably been there for at least two hours, and when we'll leave around 2, 3, they're still staying two more hours. So, uh, when going to road, a lot of, lot of Anson's here will work. You already know Patches, Flower, and Schmitty. Now meet. You got Dubs, who's got all the stories in the world. He's got all the stories. Uh, Party Pat. I don't know why he calls me Party Pat. A little bit more on the quieter side. That's why I call him Party Pat. And then there's Critter. I do not know why. I have no idea why. I know the story, but I think you should ask him. Critter. Yes. Explain. Uh, it's one of my first days in Dallas working uh, for the Dallas Stars. A player by the name of Bill Guerin. Uh, he asked my, he asked me my name. I told him my name. He said, "Do you do you have a nickname?" I said, "No. Your new nickname is Critter." <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Critter. So I was not going to argue. First day in the NHL. Okay, no problem. Critter, and there it was, stuck. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. A hockey guy without a nickname is like trying to tell a Golden Knights story without its supporting cast. 
As much as every day is the same, every day is different because you're gonna have a different story or a different situation or a different challenge. I love challenges. I love working in this game because of challenges, because trying to solve a problem, trying to get a solution to help the organization, to help the team, to help a player, uh, to help a staff member. That's what it is. We're sitting somewhere, I think we're in traffic somewhere, and we're looking at all the cubicles. And we're just like, I'm not sure how I could, if I could do that. I can't imagine doing any, anything else. It'd be hard to fathom. This is my dream, dream come true. I'm here. I can't imagine going anywhere else. This is fun. This isn't, I don't have a job. This is what I love to do. To be part of the team is great. To be part of the organization is great. But to be part of the little fraternity, is that, that's great as well. That's the best part. Now, George McPhee told me when he was first hired, the mandate for the Golden Knights organization was to hire the best human talent at every position. And I can tell you, after spending a couple days with those three guys, not only is it mission accomplished, but as good as they are at their jobs, and they're some of the best, they're even better people whose number one priority is to help people and to have a passion for the game of hockey. Both of those very obvious and evident in that piece. Such a huge logistical undertaking, and you getting a glimpse of it. It now was for the so first nice time. to, like you said, meet the people behind the yeah. team. They do so much so sewing. Much. Sewing. Love that, Vince. That was an amazing story. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Vince.